Historical linkages between India and Ethiopia go back about 2000 years of recorded history. Trade between two countries flourished during the ancient Oxumite Empire, which is seen to be the origin of modern Ethiopia. Indian traders flocked to the ancient port of Adulis in the 6th century AD, trading silk and spices for gold and ivory. It was in July 1948 that Ethiopia and India first established diplomatic relations at the level of legislations. The relationship was raised to ambassadorial level four years later in 1952. Equally, there has been contacts between people of both countries for many centuries and this long legacy has been nourished through trade and commerce. More recently, since the establishment of full diplomatic relations, the two countries have consistently made efforts to strengthen their relations. There has been a number of visits by the leaders of each country and a number of agreements signed. These have steadily contributed to the deepening of relations. This has been particularly visible in the way the two countries have constantly supported each other's positions in the international forums in different areas. Ethiopia and India share a common understanding on such issues as cross-border international terrorism, the need and direction for reform of the United Nations and now on climate change. India is the second largest foreign investor in Ethiopia with approved investment of 4.78 billion US dollars. Of this, approximately 1 billion US dollar is already on the ground or in the pipeline. About 40% of Indian investment is in the field of commercial agriculture. Extending the sentiment in the field of education, in April 2008, India doubled the number of scholarships offered to the Ethiopian students for university studies in India. The ties continue to grow. Hello and welcome to Indian Standard Time. I'm Siddharth Vardarajan and joining me today as part of our continuing series on the forthcoming India-Africa Forum Summit is Ambassador Gennet Zewide, Ambassador of Ethiopia. Welcome to the show, ma'am. You are a veteran of Delhi, you've been here for nine years, and uh, I think uh, uh, if there's any uh, African diplomat who knows India well, perhaps knows India best, you are the person. Oh, well, I don't, it's very difficult to know Africa, I mean, India very well in nine years, as you know that uh, India is very vast, uh, not in terms of geography, but also in terms of culture, politics, and so on. So I'm still learning. Right. <laughs> I'm still a student. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure many Indians are still learning as well. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, India and Ethiopia are countries that have had long historical ties um, without going back too much into the past. Uh, if we just look at the 20th century, when uh, the Italians invaded uh, Ethiopia or Abyssinia, as it was known then, uh, the leaders of our freedom movement, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, others raised their voices against uh, Italian occupation and essentially said that India stood with uh, Ethiopia. And of course, when India became independent, uh, we were very quick to uh, open and establish diplomatic relations with, uh, with Ethiopia. Um, governments have come and gone on both sides, but I think relations have been strong. How would you assess today the state of the economic relationship because uh, it is widely recognized that a political goodwill only takes you so far and that unless countries are uh, able to establish economic linkages, uh, there isn't that kind of strong bond that gets developed. So how would you assess the current state of economic ties between yeah, the two countries? Uh, you rightly said that our relationship way goes back, you know, centuries. But even in the uh, 21st century, when we were, you know, briefly uh, occupied by Italians, you know, um, uh, rightly so, you know, India uh, being anti-colonial uh, movement, and you know, I remember, uh, you know, somebody was telling me that there was a big demonstration here in Delhi, uh, you know, against the Italian occupation of Ethiopia, and in fact. Uh, your well-known poet and writer uh, Tagore also wrote a poem about that. So all this shows that our people-to-people -people relationship right. and as well as political relationship. Yes, you are absolutely right. Um, 
people, can, you know, government come and go, you know, our relationship during the monarchy was much better than um, during the military government. During the military government, we had our own, you know, bad days and our relationship was sort of lukewarm. Uh, but now, you know, uh, it, has, it has gone from strength to strength. Um, uh, it has become multifaceted during the, 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 the monarchy. Uh, mainly it was uh, education. You know, Lots of Indians were Indian teachers, teaching in yeah, Ethiopia. Teaching, that's yeah. right. But it's come across many Ethiopian, older Ethiopians who, have, who were taught by uh, Indian teachers, including yeah, yourself. Like including <laughs> Including myself and many of the leaders now in the in the, in the government. Uh, well, uh, the, the Indians are still teaching in my country, but the level of teaching has changed. You know, the, the, uh, at my time they were teaching in primary and secondary school. Today, many professors are teaching in in uh, Ethiopian universities. So. Uh, and also, uh, you know, many students are coming. In fact, that was one of the first uh, Government of India programs, I think, to... Yeah, the uh, first. The first, you know, to provide assistance to uh, brother countries or fellow countries. Exactly. In, the, yeah. in fact, there are so many first Indian government, not only in teaching, education, but also in investment, you know. The first Indian foreign direct investment outside, you know, to the world, it, it came to Ethiopia, you know, the Berlas, they started the first India-Ethiopia uh, um, textile mill. So... When was that? In the early 60s, in the early 60s, that is uh, right after, uh, you know, independence. Right. So, um, but now, um, uh, uh, educationally, uh, you know, we have a very vibrant relationship. Uh, there are so many uh, Ethiopians studying uh, in various Indian universities uh, during the uh, uh, ICCR uh, scholarships. In fact, I think we are the highest uh, in Africa, you know, recipient of uh, ICCR uh, uh, scholarship. Of course, also people are coming for short-term training with uh, ITEC. And moreover, you know, the Ethiopian government, you know, uh, since um, India's uh, schools of technologies, IITs are very good in technology and science and so on, the Ethiopian government has chosen India to send uh, its students, especially would-be professors, to come to India. And we have a very good um, joint program with government of uh, Ethiopian universities, with IITs, and especially with IIT Delhi. So, uh, the education one ha is uh, superb uh, because uh, uh, India is also excellent in you know in technology and so on, IT and so on. Uh, investment is also coming. Uh, today there are close to 500 uh, 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 projects in Ethiopia. Uh, you know, involving, private investors. Involving Indian investment. Indian investment. Okay, 500 uh, projects. Yeah, That's about uh, close to five billion dollars. Right. I think uh, India is one of the largest uh, investors. Yes, in yeah. Country. You know, it's uh, India uh, is the second in terms of uh, uh, in terms of number of projects, in terms of uh, uh, investment, and number one in terms of uh, projects. Project numbers, so, okay. you know, of course, there are other countries. Uh, so that is also who is, where who is ahead of India in terms of uh, money? Uh, you know, the, in terms of money, uh, I think China investment. I wouldn't say because it's uh, you know it's a different model. You know, right. the Chinese they don't have or the private sector. That's right. Yeah, but this one is government. You know, right. private private sector, and also the uh, government of India um, has given us a soft loan loan uh, to the tune of uh, over one billion dollars for various projects. Um, for uh, first for rural electrification, then for sugar development, and now for uh, regional uh, relations, uh, you know, through uh, t uh, rail or something between Djibouti and Ethiopia. So, um, in all fronts, uh, this is uh, without going into the various um, uh, uh, technical uh, uh, knowledge transfers between different institutes, for example. Uh, laser and textile is our priority area in terms of manufacturing. And we have a very close uh, cross tie up with uh, the Laser Institute of uh, uh, Chennai yeah. and also uh, in, in here in uh, 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 North Gurgaon, uh, uh, Noeda.
so and textile uh, with uh, Citra and so on and so forth. So um, we have this kind of also technology transfer with, with our uh, rail indus uh, uh, railway institutes and so on. And on uh, otherwise, we have signed many uh, uh, agreements where we work together and we're proposing to work together on uh, space because b given uh, India's expertise so that we could use the space science for agriculture and so on and so forth. And, um, and trade, I think what about trade, bilateral trade, trade? Trade, bilateral trade has also improved right. uh, because you know, a few years ago, about seven, six, uh, um, five, four years ago, it was only s uh, three, uh, 300 million. Now it has reached to 1.2 billion uh, of course which is in favor of uh, India but, but but all the same you know it shows that um, trade is also right. increasing and hopefully you know during this uh, India Africa Forum summit our tra uh, trade minister would come and uh, we might right. sign an agreement. Uh, I know a, a number of Indian companies had invested in land in farming projects which haven't really taken off have they? Yes, that is because, um, you know, uh, as you know, as you may well know that uh, uh, most of our farmers uh, are small holders and they are all in the, in the highland areas. So uh, we give land for commercial farming, you know, in the lowland areas. Uh, where has there has never been any like Gambella, for example, like Gambella yeah, yeah. and Ben Shangulgumuz, where there has never been any farming. It's a uh, virgin land and uh, uh, sparsely populated. So, uh, understandably, the, the you know the investors have faced some uh, daunting problems. So now we have uh, uh, you know stalled it for some time because we wanted you know they they had to. Uh, clear the land, you know, new road has to be built and so on and so forth. So there are some uh, logistical problems, huh, maybe. logistical yeah. and daunting problems. Some of them have really, uh, 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 you know, uh, gone ahead and have become successful. Others have not. Right. Uh, on that note, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we will discuss the wider India-Africa relationship. Uh, keep watching IST. Welcome back. My guest for this issue of IST is Ambassador Gennad Zawide, Ambassador of Ethiopia. Before we took a break, we'll be discussing bilateral relations, and I, I do want to look at the Africa-India relationship. But before we get there, you know, having visited Addis myself and uh, you know enjoyed the beauty of the city and the country, uh, I've often been struck by why there has, why there is not more tourist traffic. I mean, you have daily flights from. Uh, India to Addis. Uh, Ethiopian Airlines is a wonderful airline which has connectivity across the continent. Uh, it seems to me that people-to-people -people, uh, exchanges or contact and promotion of cultural exchange, tourism, this is perhaps one area that we haven't uh, done enough for. Mm. Absolutely. You know, um, we had a very vibrant tourist uh, activities, tourism activities uh, during, you know, during the monarchy. When the military government came and when we had our problem of civil war, pra uh, drought, uh, you know, and, and so on and so forth, you know, the, 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 the tourist tatra, you know, moved to somewhere else in Africa. Now we are, we are reviving that, you know, you are right, we are late, but we are reviving now. I think, uh, you know, from year to year, the number of tourists who are coming uh, to Ethiopia is growing because um, we are one of the African, one of the few African countries, we have both uh, history, uh, nature, and other attractions, and for that reason, you know, uh, they're coming. In terms of uh, India, Ethiopia, I don't know if you have visited our cultural center. Yeah, that is, that, that is why, you know, what, that is the purpose of, of, uh, of developing people-to-people -people and cultural ties with the people of uh, uh, India, and, I, and that has really, uh, 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 have brought our, uh, you know, our culture, our uh, tourist attraction areas, and and from time to time we have lectures about Ethiopia, about culture, and so on and so forth. So uh, it will pick up. Okay. Now, uh, Addis is also the headquarters of the African Union, and Addis is where the first, uh, not the first, the second, uh, the last India-Africa Forum summit was held. 
uh, I think 14 or 15 heads of government attended and Manmohan Singh, who was the Prime Minister, and it was a very successful summit. I happened to cover it as a journalist. And uh, now we have the third summit, which is on a much more ambitious scale. Uh, how do you assess the future trajectory of uh, India-Africa relations? Uh, do you think that uh, after that the two sides are ready now to actually uh, take on more ambitious projects? Uh, and you know, right now there's been a lot of goodwill and sentiment, but not that much of follow-up. And do you think we're now ready to do that? Uh, I hope so, and uh, that, that, that is uh, the feeling that we have among us as in uh, African ambassadors, though we haven't seen concretely the, the, the documents that's going to be discussed, but this is a hope, and this is a signal we get when we discuss uh, with, with various uh, people. You know, um, the, uh, Africa and India uh, are the future. You know, uh, People used to say that Asia is the future. Yes, it, Asia is, uh, was the future and it still is the future, but I think Africa's time has, has also come. If you look into economic developments, you know, uh, uh, the majority of uh, the fastest developing countries are in Africa, including Ethiopia. Uh, moreover, you know, um, and you have a young, very well, very yeah, educated that's population. That's going, right. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. You know, Africa is very young and very dynamic. Uh, you know, uh, they have this entrepreneurial skill, uh, and also we have the resources. I mean, the oil and gas, of course, uh, and also uh, very rare, uh, uh, um, very rare, uh, uh, you know, uh, mine, you know, resources and uh, stones and so on and so forth. So. Um, Moreover, you know, uh, India, uh, Africa is, in terms of geographic, uh, is uh, 10 times larger than Africa, uh, than India. However, we have less population. So uh, all this would attract, you know, India uh, um, is a vegetarian country, you know, the palaces and so on. So uh, Africa uh, and India will, uh, hopefully, will collaborate. Uh, based on a mutual assistance level, you know, because you need energy, we ne you need uh, 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 food security, uh, uh, Africa has that, and Africa also needs um, appropriate technology, which uh, India has in abundance. And so is that what you see I as, uh, I mean, because uh, I was going to ask you, of all of Africa's present and prospective partners, uh, what is it that you feel as an African diplomat that India offers that perhaps other countries don't? Well, India offers technology, yeah. very good, IT, technology. So this is technology it, that is appropriate, that is affordable? Appropriate, affordable, yeah. appropriate. And uh, in the past, India's uh, assist, uh, assistance or uh, engagement with Africa has been based on, on human center, right. you know, education and so on and so forth. And that has to continue. And also, uh, you know, uh, Africa has now uh, puts an agenda, a vision, an agenda to reach uh, in in uh, in 2063. It's uh, so, uh, and also the UN uh, last month uh, in Indeed. September, That's right, the sustainable development. With sustainable yeah. development. So these two countries can can work on uh, eradicating poverty, and improving technology, and uh, uh, you know, in health they can we can collaborate. In education we can collaborate. We can collaborate on um, ocean and maritime time uh, because there is a big uh, Asian uh, you know, uh, Indian Ocean, Indian Ocean, Ocean yeah, exactly. yeah. so there are uh, wide um, and vast uh, uh, new new areas that we can collaborate based on sustainable development of the UN and also um, Africa's uh, ambition uh, where it wants to reach in 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 2063, where poverty, you know, is Having eradicated, eradicated poverty, yeah. and so on. So there are uh, wide areas, and uh, when Africa and India collaborate, you know, to huge population, young population in both, you know, will be the driver of uh, the global economy yes. together. No, w one of the remarkable changes in Africa over the last decade or two decades is also the inroads that uh, constitutional authority and democratic government has has made. I mean, recently in West Africa, for example, when in Burkina Faso or 
uh, earlier in Mali, you know, militaries tried to take over. The African Union has put its foot down and said that this is not acceptable. Not also, you know, yes, that, and also Africa Union has set up a, a peer review mechanism where we review each other on our uh, uh, commitment on good governance and democracy and so on. So we are taking, you know, African uh, Union and African governments are taking, you know, their own fate, their own hands. You know, they, you know, they, they we want to get rid of this. Uh, picture of Africa where there is always uh, instability, war here and there, so where, yeah. I mean, it seems as if Africa's governance institutions are strengthening themselves, becoming more capable, which in a way creates a very good basis for countries like India to get involved and particularly on the economic side. For economic side. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, the um, one area of agreement but also some divergence between India and the African Union uh, or the African continent as a whole is on the uh, question of UN reform. Uh, I say there's agreement because uh, India wants UN reform with an expanded Security Council. Uh, Africa, as reflected in the Azalwini consensus, uh, has also said it believes in uh, re representation of Africa. Uh, of course, the African position is uh, very firm that there must be uh, the new permanent members must have veto power. Uh, but beyond that, it's been difficult for uh, India, which is operating with the G4 group of countries, to uh, come together and make a united um, appeal or a, uni a united form a united strategy with, with the African side. Do you think that this summit could provide an opportunity for some forward movement on that front? Well, that we will see when our leaders meet. You know, um, there's a meeting of the foreign uh, ministers and also later on on the 29th with the leaders. But however, you know, uh, both, both India and Africa, you know, want the reform. You know, as India wants to be represented, rightly so. Yes. Huh? In, the, in the UN Security Council, we, Africa, as a nation, 54 nations, we also want to be, uh, to be represented. It would be unfair on the, on the, you know, on the UN you know, to leave out 54 African countries. Uh, we may not have figured uh, a few years ago, you know, uh, or uh, forgotten or um, dismissed as uh, a dark continent or, or as a failed continent. But that's not the story now. You know, we have a growth story now, we have economic story. We could play a big role uh, and a natural role. Therefore, I don't see why, you know, we should not work together because uh, what we are requesting, both India and Africa, is a democratic, it's the same thing. So why, why, why not? The UN that represents the reality of the world. Exactly. I mean, right now the efforts have been on parallel tracks, but perhaps after the summit it's possible that we may see a joint uh, attempt to democratize the United Nations. I hope so. <laughs> on that note, uh, Ambassador Zavide, we'll have to end it there. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Thank you very Indian much. Standard Thank you. Time. Thank you. That wraps up this episode. Do join us again with another guest next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.